We're here at ITU Telecom World 2015 in Budapest in Hungary and I'm very pleased to be joined by Professor Nicholas Negroponte who is Chairman Emeritus of the MIT Media Lab amongst other things including uh, being one of the first people I understand to have used the internet and uh, an author of uh, such seminal uh, books as uh, Being Digital which very much uh, has impacted on our digital world today. And I'd like to talk to you, start off by talking to you about the theme of ITU Telecom World 2015. It's accelerating innovation for social impact. How have you seen ICT innovation directly impacting on socioeconomic development and people's lives? Well, I think there's, there's no question that connectivity in general has created both prosperity, wealth, uh, health education and learning. and you know, in the poorest as well as the richest countries. Um, I think that the theme of the ITU to accelerate it probably needs a little bit of a parenthesis after the word accelerate to accelerate where normal market forces might not ordinarily accelerate. Because if you look at the landscape globally, the absence of connectivity is noticeably in poor countries and rural parts of richer countries. So that's not only true, but it's a natural fallout of market forces and what would make sense to develop as a business. And my thesis, which is what I came to this meeting to present, is to consider telecommunications as part of civil society, not just a corporate opportunity. What concrete measures do you think that government and industry can take to encourage entrepreneurship and foster the growth of SMEs in the ICT sector? Would just making it easier to start and do a com company of some sort is going to make that flourish. Uh, it turns out it's very hard in some places, even things that you might not think of, like the bankruptcy laws, are very discouraging. So there are many things you can do on a regulatory side, which I'm convinced the ITU will do. I ask that question because here we're, we're surrounded by a number of uh, pavilions here on the, the show floor uh, mm. that have brought uh, SMEs along. We have uh, another section here where SMEs are displaying uh, their products and their projects. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what's the most important advice that you would give as a mentor to uh, budding ICT entrepreneurs? Well, I've been involved with the startup economy for many years. I've funded over 60, 60 startups personally. So I've been deeply involved with that. I give slightly different advice today because I think the startup economy has perhaps gone a little too far and is sucking a lot of the talent out. And you are getting the quick turns, the app, the this and that, and the the percentage of students that go on to work on really hard, really long-term problems has gone down. And there's a deficit today for those that want to work on hard problems. So I'm actually pushing a little bit the other way, asking people to join civic society, to do NGOs, to, to address big problems whether it's ITU type problems, whether it's fusion, whether it's you know, eliminating poverty. I mean, there are many things you could do that are part of global civic society that aren't just a startup or a small company. And what's the value for you of attending events such as ITU Telecom World 2015? Well, the value to me is a little bit sort of the fox and the chicken coop, where the audience is the chicken coop. And I get to, to have a podium where most people might disagree. If everybody agreed with me, then I wouldn't be worth coming. But in general, my theories and beliefs and actions right now are quite orthogonal to the person who would come to a meeting like this. Now, they may agree or they may disagree, but one thing is for certain that when you do say something, that people do listen and uh, they, they, they take notice of, of, uh, 
uh, of your vision. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, for people who weren't able to, to attend your talk today, what's your main message to participants here at ITU Telecom World? Well, my main message to all the participants is that connectivity shouldn't be just affordable, it should be free. And it's not as if making more and more and more affordable gets you closer to free. There's actually a jump. It's, it's, there's, it's not an asymptotic or it doesn't cross the line. There's a real jump in belief. And the analogy I use is if I came to you and you're a head of state and I say, I will provide education for all of your children, kindergarten through 12th grade, but it's going to be private education. And you say, no, that can't be. I, I, no, I can't let you do that. So that's OK, I have another idea. I'm going to charge half the children twice as much and give it free to the other half. You say, well, that's not quite right either. And then I say, well, I'm going to lower the price. And I think, and so in the end, obviously, price matters, whether it's being paid through taxes and government or whether it's being paid. Of course, the prices must come down as much as, as possible. But there is a point where something flips. And even if you don't call it a human right, which I happen to, at least it's a civic responsibility. And one thing about civics and human rights is they're free. And people have said loosely they think that connectivity should be a human right. Uh, access to the internet is a human right. but they say that and they don't really realize that all human rights are free. And so you have, to, you have to make that leap and believe, is it really part of our essence? And I think it is. Professor Nick thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. You're very welcome. Thank you.